this video, I'll show you how to create an advanced mesh setup using Bendy Bones. In the description you can find links for the original mesh, the file that I'm using here so you can follow along, as well as the final rig. So, let's get started. First, let's change the armature display mode to B-Bone. Switch to pose mode, select the two neck bones, go to bone properties, and under bendy bones, change segments to 10. This enables us to work with bendy bones. Now we need to create custom bendy bone handles. Let's add one at the start of the neck. Let's align it to the neck by shift selecting the neck bone and pressing Ctrl Alt A. Duplicate this bone twice to create the middle handle and the end handle. Snap their positions to the middle and end of the neck. Rename the first one to MCH Neck Start Handle, the middle one to Neck, and the last one to MCH Neck End Handle. Let's assign these new bones as custom handles for the neck bones. Select the first one, set handles to tangent, and assign the first and second handle bones in the custom fields. Do the same for the second neck bone. Handles to tangent, middle and last handle bones as custom handles. These handle bones now control the curvature of the neck. To make the neck stretchy, give the bones stretch to constraints with the custom handle bones as targets. This results in this behavior. Next, we will create a setup that will make it easier to animate the full neck. Add a new bone at the start of the neck. Snap its tail to the end of the neck. Give it 15 bendy bone segments. Make sure you are in edit mode and set the ease in and out values to 1.5. Back to pose mode. Now assign the handles to this bone too. Mode to tangent. Start handle is the first handle bone. To fix this weird twist, just align its orientation with the first handle bone. And end handle is the end handle bone. Rename it to MCH neck and stretch to end handle. This bone will create a seamless curvature in the neck while maintaining the division in the middle for secondary control. Now let's make the middle handle follow this bone by using a copy transforms constraint. In this new constraint settings, set the head tail value to 0.5 and enable the follow B bone button. Also reset the stretch to constraints if needed. Now you can see how, even with the two separate bones, we get one seamless curve. Select the middle handle again, press Ctrl A and choose Apply Selected as Rest Pose. Just to make sure that the bone's position will be the same in Edit and Pose mode. By constraining the middle handle bone to the neck, we have lost the option to animate it, so let's fix that now. Start by duplicating it and scale it down so it's easier to select. Rename it to buff neck and parent the original handle to this new bone. Adding buffer bones is very common in Blender because many constraints don't have transformation offsets. Select the middle handle again and delete its constraints. As you can see, now we can freely transform the middle handle, but it still follows the neck. As the next step, let's add the head and chest control bones. We'll do this by duplicating the chest deform bone and renaming it to chest, and then duplicating the head bone and renaming it to head. I already prepared some custom shapes that I will assign to these controls now. One for the head. And 
and one for the chest. And one for the neck as well. Now these controls do look pretty, but they don't have any functionality yet. So let's hook them up. Start by parenting the start handle and the neck bone to the chest control. And then parent the end handle to the head control. Let's see how it works now. And this is what we call a dependency cycle. The head is parented to the neck and the neck is constrained to the head. So one will keep updating the other one infinitely. In this case, to fix it, just unparent the head control. With that, most of the setup is done, but there is one area that we can still improve. So when the neck is stretched or squashed, you would expect it to behave in a certain way, but if you take a look at it now, it is always maintaining this S shape, and that does not look very natural. And what we would like to happen is that when it is stretched, that it becomes straight, and when it's squashed, that it becomes more curved. Now this behavior can be changed by changing the ease in and out values on a b-bone. As you can see here, by making it smaller, the neck is becoming more straight, and by increasing it, the neck is becoming more curved. To automate these changes, we can use a driver. This driver will measure the neck length, and based on that, it will either decrease or increase these values. Before we create the driver, let's add one extra bone. This bone will serve as a reference point for measuring the default neck length. So duplicate the end neck handle and parent it to the chest control. Rename it to MCH neck length ref. It should stay in place when we move the neck or the head. Now select the MCH neck bone, right click on the ease out parameter and choose add driver. I don't like using this floating driver edit window. So I will split my view and change the mode for the left one to drivers and show the side panel and switch to the drivers tab. First, let's create all the variables we will need. Change the mode for this one to distance, add another one, change it also to distance, rename the first one to dist. This is fine for now, just allow execution. Rename the second one to dist underscore ref. Set all object values to be our rig. You can easily copy and paste these. Now for this, the first bone will be the start handle and the second bone will be the end handle. And for this ref, the first bone will be the start handle and the second bone will be the length ref bone. Now we can start writing the driver expression. The first part would be to divide this with this ref. By dividing these two, we get the stretching factor. So when we deform the neck, this value will tell us by how much we have shortened or lengthened the neck. Now, by adding one minus before the division, the value will start from zero instead of from one, and it will also be inverted. And this is exactly what we want. The next thing we can change is how fast the neck becomes straight. As you can see now, we have to stretch it quite far for it to become straight. And when it's squashed, it's not curved enough. So let's get back to our driver. Put the existing expression between parentheses and multiply it all by 2.5. I played around with this value and 2.5 gave me the best result. This works, but it immediately shows us the next issue we have to fix. When we stretch the neck too far, the value goes beyond minus one and that breaks the neck. So we need to make sure that it never goes beyond minus 0 0.9. For that, we can use the max expression and as the first value, we type in minus 0 0.9 and put everything in parentheses. We can even go as far as minus 0 0.99. So let's adjust the expression. And with that, the driver is done. What's left to do is to copy it to some other easing values. Right click on it and select copy as new driver. Then right click and paste driver on the ease in parameter. 
By doing it this way, if needed, we only need to adjust the ease out driver and the ease in will inherit the changes. Let's take a look at how the neck is deforming now. It's almost there. Let's select the second neck deform bone and paste the driver on the ease in and ease out parameters. And for the first neck deform bone, let's paste it only on the ease out parameter. I found that applying the driver to these ease in and out parameters gives the nicest looking neck poses. And lastly, we can do some cleanup. Let's move the head and chest controls to the first armature layer and the neck control to the second one. This way we can display only what we need. I have already prepared some colored bone groups to which I will assign the controls now. And with that, this neck rig is done. If you would like to support this channel and learn more about rigging and animation, consider subscribing to my Patreon. Thank you for watching.